873 2GB now presents a special tribute to John Pierce, one of the greats of Australian broadcasting. Hello, Robertson here. I've never been crazy about moustaches, but I thought if Pierce can live with that one, I suppose I can. What a whopper. But really, he and the growth were essential to each other, huddling together like waifs in a forest. I like John Pierce. He seemed to like me, like the conservative blokes that we were, we communicated much like neighbours randomly throwing garbage over each other's fences. But what about what he did on air? Radio, as he would tell me, was for entertainment purposes only. That, of course, meant entertaining all the senses, the brain, the heart, the appendix, whatever. Journalists, we would agree, really aren't funny people. Mr Pierce was not a journalist, a bit too bright for that. Bright, effervescent, bright, intelligent, not one of those. He was one of the last of the old radio men. He never apologised for radio. It was a medium like television, but with a somewhat better picture. He was openly loyal to those on air at his station, and you knew he meant it. Like most ratbags, he didn't care much for management. Proof of that was that he never mentioned them on air, beneath his station, so to speak. But he did care for people. He was a bit like the biggest kitten in the litter, who would belt up the other kittens one moment, but be there when the fridge door opened to make sure they all had their fair share of food. Pierce really did like to annoy people on the air. The second half of his Saturday night show would tell us all what sort of mood Pierce was in tonight. We would wait, like the drawing of a lotto prize, to find out how the numbers would roll out for that night. Yes, he was rude, but strangely, everyone who rang through thought they were special and would be afforded special treatment from the Oracle. Born optimists. I could see that JP would never retire. If you retire, you die, whether you die or not. He encouraged me unwittingly to resolve to never give up, either. Of course, they say he was about 71. Nonsense. He was just a big, naughty boy with the enviable enthusiasm of a bright ten-year-old. If you saw that great face beam at some discovery, you'd realise that you were the older one, and it would pay you to listen. Look, I liked the guy. He was always there on Saturday nights. I would potter around with Pierce in the background trying to cure Australia's ills and send up the mentally challenged and joust with those who are out to get him. Pierce was a bit of a hero to a lot of little people, and now he's left us all. For something better, I trust. John Pierce always had the last word, but ironically, not at the very end. We at last now have our chance to say what we feel about that lovely bloke. Hopefully without interruption. Absolute rubbish. The year was 1954, a time when Sydney's population of one and a half million was enjoying the heady post-war era. The horrors of World War II had ended almost a decade earlier. Our soldiers, sailors and airmen had returned home. There was full employment. And rock and roll was about to become the preferred drug of teenagers. But for now, parents enjoyed Doris Day. No! Kitty Callum. For always and ever, now and forever, little things mean a lot. The four aces. Three coins in the fountain, each one seeking happiness. And the cordets. And lots of wavy hair like liberty. Mr. Sandman. Sydney was Australia's premier city. There were no buildings taller than four storeys, and trams clattered their way through the city streets. Radio was the main form of home entertainment, with families spending their evenings huddled around the crackling wireless listening to their favourite programmes, quiz shows like The Quiz Kids with John Deese. Pick a box with Bob and Dolly Dye. Thank you, customers, and welcome to the new look pick a box. Ah, oh, yes, a great night tonight. New sponsors, new scenery, new boxes, a lot of new prizes, a lot of changes, but I have a confession to make. <laughs> Dolly and I are still the same. Cereals like Superman. Superman! Tarzan.
keen eyes on the spot where O'Rourke disappeared, grasping one end of a stout trailing vine in his left hand, the ape man leaps out into space, swoops downward toward the surface of the river in a wide, dizzy arc. Rolling over and over in the swift current, O'Rourke comes gasping to the surface. The Bunkhouse Show. Hey there, partners, come on to the bunkhouse. Out west in the sun, where there's plenty of fun at the Bunkhouse Show. The Witch's Tale. <laughs> I'm not an three-year-old I be today. Yes, sir. And plays from the Caltex Radio Theatre. God, don't do it. Let me out. Let stop. me out. Stop it. Let go of me. Let me out of here. Eva, will you stop it? Don't please. Let me take me. Eva. Stop. Stop, John. Turn around. Let go of the wheel. Eva. <laughs> In those days, the most popular radio station, the station which boasted such megastars as Jack Davey and Bob Dyer, was 2GB. And don't say yes or no. Dodge those two words. You ready? Dodge yes or no. Hey, here's the buzzer. Uh. Right. Full name? Louis Satchmo Armstrong. Satchmo? Yeah. <laughs> That was the scene that greeted a 25-year-old, fresh-faced, mustachioed John Pierce when he first joined the station all those years ago. He's 11 years younger than I am. John's older sister, Dorothy Fisher. I'm 82. We had another... Well, he didn't know Teddy. He died when he was eight with rheumatic fever. And I was fretting so much that the doctor said to Mother, you better have another one or you're going to lose her too. And I said to John when he grew up, you know, if it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't be here. And he said, didn't Mum and Dad have anything to do with it at all? John's parents knew the value of an education, sending Dorothy and John to expensive Sydney private schools. He went to shore. First of all, he went to St John's Darling first, because I was at Skeggs, and I used to go and pick him up after school and bring him home to Hurstville. We were both born in Cobra, but uh, the family were living in Hurstville by the time he arrived. But Mother went back to the same hospital where... He'd had me, and um, he was not a good student. He worked very well at what he liked and didn't work at what he didn't like. I guess it was spoiled a bit being so young and with the three of us and we all made a fuss of him. I mean, he wasn't allowed to give cheek or anything like that. But uh, he was, uh, I think, sometimes unfortunate in a way that everything he wanted to do, he managed to do. Coming up next, John Pierce realises his two great passions, flying... There is no such thing as a crash landing. You either crash or you land. ...and broadcasting. It was just my dream as a little kid to come up and uh, broadcast on the station. You're listening to a special tribute to John Pierce on 873 2GB.